Hello everybody, this is Bud Rich and in this video we start building the website that I was hinting about in the end of the last video. Um, but first we need to finish this round of Tetris and um, I thought uh, also you can see I have uh, the Python uh, i3 IPC uh, page open there uh, and I would like to address that they have fixed that issue that uh, I mentioned in the last video just took uh, it took less than a than a day for everything to get fixed and and patched and, and a new release is up and now everything is working fine so very very good uh, healthy project good development so all kudos to to um, uh, Akriski the, the main developer of, of, of this package. Uh, just wanted to say that. Uh, so I guess we are soon done here with the Tetris. Um, and then we get started with the Hugo. And my plan here for this video is to follow the, the quick start guide on uh, the, the official Hugo quick start guide, which is somewhat of a hello world how to, to, to just get it up and running because I, I, I really think uh, we should do that um, and I hope that if you're watching this and, and want to learn how to use Hugo you should also follow this guide uh, and, and set it up even if it's just a stupid uh, quick start guide here just to see that everything is working and stuff it's uh, it's good to do We'll see here. Uh, okay, we're done. Or oh, no, no, no. that there. Uh, all right, all right. Let's start this. Go to Hugo's official homepage. Go Hugo.io. Click the big blue button. Quick start. Quick start. And the first step is, of course, to install Hugo. Um, I think it's available in, in most package managers' uh, official repositories. Uh, Pacman has it le at least, so Pacman, search for it with capital S, lowercase case S, Hugo, and Pacman, Pacmans. There, you can see it's, it's available in the community repositories. Uh, so first off install this uh, however you do and yeah th this is uh, also good to know that Hugo is available on, on any operating system and I have actually built a site with Hugo on Windows and it Hugo itself works exactly the same way on Windows and Linux and, and whatever and and, uh, and that's uh, so, so this is this is not Linux specific in any way except for this these first steps uh, installing stuff you know but when you think that everything is installed you should uh, first and foremost just do this command hugo version to, to which will print the version uh, information if everything is installed correctly when you have done so um, close the tetris uh, windows and create a new site here uh, but i think i will add a little extra step here before we do so let's create a, a, a some some sort of, of uh, workspace or, or environment for where we want to keep our websites and i think i want to do it inside the git directory here in my home directory uh, we will create a www directory there um, and this is where we will keep the sites that we build so navigate to that directory where you want to, to, to create the root of your site, so to speak. So git www. And then execute this command, hugo new site quick start. And when we do so, we can see it created a new directory here with the same name as our site quick start and with some, um, yeah, with a skeleton here, so to speak, to uh, on, that we will use to build the site. Um, 
Another thing that I like to do is to create a new project in Sublime. So I close the old project and then I have some um, stuff set up so I can just open a, a, a directory and it will automatically create a new project based on that directory, whatever. And this is this is bud rich uh, specifics, but good to do some something similar, you know. And here we can see this quick start uh, directory in Sublime. Next step is uh, add a theme. And really quick here, uh, I have, have it already open, the, the theme lists here. Um, Hugo proudly uh, present you with all of these pre-built themes that you can use to kind of uh, completely change uh, the, the appearance of, of the website by just changing theme. It is very cool uh, and, and one of the biggest benefits. And it's it's also nice if you want to, you can create a, your own theme of your own style, you know, and, and then maybe you want to try out or work on a, a, a new layout and everything. You, you can have both of them, whatever. It, th this is a very cool feature and it's actually also quite easy to use. Should also mention really quickly, the quick start guide here have these install instructions for themes. Some of the themes uh, might have additional installation steps, uh, but just open one of them up if you want to try them. And then see if there are any extra installation uh, steps here on, 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 on the themes page. But we use uh, the Ananke theme here as they suggest in the Let's see if we can find it here. I'm not, mm, yeah, there it is. This is the theme that we will use uh, now. So first we CD into our quick start directory here from, from the terminal. Then we do a git init to create a, a git uh, repository of it. And then we add a git sub module here. And of course, there are also instructions on how to do this for non git users. Uh, so you can just uh, download the zip file and use that instead. But, but we follow the instructions here. So git sub module add, and then we can see here themes slash anan ananke, uh, uh, which will clone and create a sub module uh, into the themes directory here. And it will just take a minute, or no, it will take a couple of seconds. There, it's done. Um, and finally, we should also execute this command. Echo, and then a theme ananke here, redirect that to the config.toml file in, in the, in the um, website root here. And this config.toml, this is like the config file for the whole site. Uh, where you add things like, yeah, for example, which theme you want to use. So now when I execute this command, we can see it's added as a line here in, in our config file. Step four, add some content. Uh, you can manually create content files, for example, as content slash category file dot format and provide metadata in them. However, you can use the new command to do those things uh, automatically. So we, we follow, we keep on following the guide. Hugo new post slash my first post. Let's open Sublime here. So this will create uh, this post slash my first post in the content directory here, which is where all content will get stored. And here we can now see that file is created. It looks like this. Also notice here, the file name is my dash first dash post, all lowercase, but the title is uh, each word is uh, capitalized and, and the dashes are removed. This is done automatically from uh, with this file. This is like a template for new markdown files here. Here you can see it replaces the dash with spaces uh, and I think this title is what capitalizes each word. You can also add like a date and you can add more keys to this template and then all your new posts will have that. We get back to this uh, later in, in later videos. Step five, start the Hugo server. Um, 
and this is when things get cool. So we execute this command, hugo server dash capital D. And be sure to be in the quick start directory uh, when you do all these commands. There, now it have created, started a, a server here and it, it does that on at this address, localhost colon 1330. So copy that URL uh, and open it in your browser and you should see the page and here it is. Here we have this first post we created, we can click here and here it is. Um, Feel free to add it or add new content and simply refresh the browser to see changes quickly. You might need to force refresh. Uh, well, actually, uh, I think it will automatically refresh the, the, the site here. See, now I have this my first post uh, uh, page open. And now you will also see why I really like using um, tiling window managers. If we enlarge this so this is my first or this is the file that's displayed here so if i change the title here my first post ever made on hugo save this document there you can see it re refreshed uh, the server immediately with with the rendered html uh, and if we can add more content here uh, you can create a header more content you can just uh, type stuff in Markdown. Even write some code. Whatever. Save. And there. You see, oh, it didn't render this header. We need a space there. So, and, and this is just, this was just good, you know. Sometimes you make small uh, errors like that when you're writing articles and stuff. You immediately see if something like that has happened and you can change it in the document, have, it, have everything refreshed up and running automatically like this. And you know, this is Markdown, this is HTML. And if you go back here to, to, to the first page, we can see it have, uh, this is also updated. And if we wanted to, we could also create more uh, more pages there. So if we do this really quickly, and then Hugo, yeah, I already had had a command there. Hugo new post another MD that that will create a new post here, and you can see it added it immediately to to the web server, generated the HTML. This is uh, the, the benefit of using Hugo, in my opinion, is that it is insanely fast uh, generating these pages. Because the, yeah, the, this is not a trivial uh, uh, thing that it, it does when it renders all this. It, it generates different CSS and different layouts. And it, it works very well with very, very large uh, projects. I, I had a blog with uh, I think 200 different markdown documents and, and it generated the whole site in, 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 in about uh, half a second, which is mind blowing in a way. And, and that's, that's the power of Hugo or maybe the power of Go. Okay, let's see if the quick start guide have some more uh, information for us here. I don't think it's... Yeah, we can replace the title with our title. Build the static pages. Yeah, this, this is a good step to do. Mm. So if we do this, let's change the draft type here to false. Yeah, maybe we can do that also. I don't think that will affect the site here in any way here. Uh, but if we restart the server here, without the D flag, then you will see that this page will be rendered, but not another here, because that's a draft, and, and that's what this D flag does. Now you can see the page here without... Uh, there I needed to, to, to make a, a refresh the browser, because... Yeah, you get it. 
but now the drafts aren't aren't part of of, of the build or or the server. But it, it never builds anything. It stores this in in cache somehow. Uh, this web server. Uh, but if you execute Hugo without any uh, other arguments, you will see it will create another directory here called uh, maybe it's no, but you can customize that uh, to where you want to uh, publish the site, so to speak. So Hugo there it created the public directory, and this contains the rendered site here, the the actual HTML with our uh, pages here. We can see my first post. And you can see it took 41 milliseconds uh, for it to do this. Uh, now it was only one page that it rendered, but it, it, it's very fast. Uh, and this public directory, you could just publish this uh, directory to to like uh, yeah your 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 site provider. So let's see public. I know there were some issues when I tried to open this last time. We we'll see if it works now. Yeah, now it it doesn't get the theme correctly here, but. We will set. We will make this work fine in in our version here, but that's the quick start guide, and I really recommend you you you, you do this to just get get to this this state of, of everything. Um, next video, I thought uh, we we could actually start by doing that, uh, setting up uh, GitHub, uh, so we can because that's where I want to publish. Um, uh, the, the pages we do here. Uh, I haven't really decided if, if we will do the Bud Labs web page or the Budridge because I am Budridge, you know. Um, but and I think I will do the Budridge uh, web page, which will be a blog. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I could discuss a bit about my plan here. It's it's not written in stone in any ways here, but I think I, I want to do something like this. I want to create a Bud Labs web page, uh, which is like. Uh, a portal for all the Bud Labs project, uh, and all the Bud Labs projects are, as you know, uh, i3s, Mondo, BWP, Polyfy. It, it's starting to add up all of these things, and also the YouTube channel and everything. That is like Bud Labs, and I want that to be. Um, yeah, I want a web page that collects all of those things, and then maybe. Uh, in the future, I, I want to create like separate web pages for the different uh, uh, applications here, um, but they will live under this Bud Labs umbrella web page. Then I also want to create uh, a, a Budridge uh, uh, blog here, a blog for myself that will, of course, also be in this Bud Labs uh, uh, umbrella. <laughs> Thing, but 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 I think I will create the web page we we do now in the series here will be a blog that I I, I do for myself here, not that uh, Bud Labs uh, page. If, if if you get what I mean, it it, it doesn't really matter at all. Uh, but I guess that it's more interesting to see how to create a blog because that's probably what most of of, of you watching this would like to do yourself. Because everyone doesn't have a Bud Labs organization. Whatever. We take that in the next video. We create a, a, a public repo and stuff here on GitHub. So we, we, we actually will have a site up and running uh, by the end of that. And maybe that will also not be longer than 20 minutes long. We will see. But it's also... Yeah, and I need to research that a bit here. How, how, um, how to set it up correctly with branches and stuff. But as you can see, this is like uh, the HTML source that we generated here. That is different from, from this source. We don't want all of that in the, at the same place. And yeah, we, we, we ha I have to figure out how to do, do this right this time. Because in my previous projects, then I have only uploaded uh, the, the HTML and, and never, never made the source, uh, the Hugo source here, uh, public. And maybe that's a good idea. Maybe we, we, we stick to that because maybe you don't want to have every single draft you create and stuff public on Git, GitHub or, or whatever. We I don't know. But then you don't have it version control and whatever. I have to figure out how to do that. But we do it in the next video. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this interesting. Um, and I will not... Uh, yeah, we, we just... 
take it from here, you know, there are web dev world, there are always one million two different ways to do everything and there are always, it, it's just like Linux, it's always, oh, you shouldn't use i3, you should use DWM, or you shouldn't use Hugo, you should use Jekyll, or you shouldn't use CSS, you should use SAS, or you shouldn't use JavaScript, you should use this, you should use... You, you. Whatever, just block all, all those voices, you know, and, and, and do whatever works for you. Uh, my, my rule of thumb when it comes to comments like that is that people who don't have any, any projects of their own, if you don't have a Hugo site, then I, I, I will not take your criticism against Hugo. I, I, I will not even listen to it. But if, if you have experience, if you have created a page, you have a page and you say, hey man, maybe you shouldn't use Hugo. I, I have created this site and, and I've encountered these issues and so on and so on. You get comments like those also from, from experienced people. And they are always different. They are never like this shouting voice. Ah! That's what I listen to, if I listen to that at all. But, but my, my way is more to just try something, trying to stick to it uh, and, and change if, if I get uh, angry <laughs> on, on, on something. Uh, don't always just follow the new shiny thing. And that's very... Uh, it's important in Linux to not get lost in, in that, you know, but it's even more important in web dev world because there are so many shiny things and they all lead to a big pot of poo somewhere in a dark forest where you don't want to be. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.